Hello everyone. In today's video, my friend Shivam will be sharing his internship and full-time experience with Visa. Shivam has been working as a full-stack developer at Visa for almost a year now, and he also did a two-month internship with them in 2019, post which he received his PPO. So, first of all, welcome Shivam, and thanks for taking out time to share your experience. Shanshita, it's a pleasure. Sure. So, as usual, our discussion today will be divided into different sections. We'll be discussing about your experience, some general info about the roles, tech stacks, and benefits, and then we'll move on to the preparation part and what apply, what procedure you can expect when you are applying for visa, and then we'll also briefly discuss about your interview experience. Sure. Okay, and as usual, the timestamps would be in the description, so feel free to jump to relevant sections. Right. So, Shivam, uh, would you like to begin by sharing your experience as an intern and full-time developer at Visa? Okay, so that so as an intern, it was in full-time. It's a virtual experience, and intern, it was an on-site experience. So, on-site experience was really good. So the team was really helpful, and the one of the key features during the intern was that the projects we worked on, uh, they were towards the stage of moving to production, and like even few teams, like uh, there were few interns along with me who even saw their projects go live, which is a very good feeling. So this is one of a key feature I felt is a thing which everyone tries to make their project. complete sooner and push it to production so that the interns can actually see their product go live which is a very good feeling and we also have to go through testing and all the process before production so we get get, uh, get to learn a lot so this is one thing about the internship i would like to mention and other than that the experience was good like the people are very friendly and uh, we used to we used to go out for lunch and all also these are something which happens a lot in visa so the overall experience was nice um with a virtual experience in full time it's like uh, it's good people are really helpful uh, so earlier i was when i was there uh, i joined in a us team so i had to work late hours and early morning but people were really helpful uh, people in the us used to make adjustments for my timing so this is one thing which is very good about visa like everyone is very helpful and ready to help and it is a very good work experience here so this is something i really like about visa sure sure I, and i definitely agree to the point that uh, the best part is when you can see the impact of your work and if uh, if you worked on something for 2 months and you can see that go live like that that's an uh, that's an amazing feeling because you actually feel you accomplished something yeah sure uh, it's not always like uh, because 2 months is a very less span it's not always like your product will go live but right. yes it is at a phase where it is about to get live like you are doing the testing the manager will say okay these are the test cases failing okay we want to there are product reviews there are code reviews is going on so that process that part you get to enjoy like it's not always just about coding it's about also the reviews which we have to face in full time we also get a taste of it during the intern Right, right. So seems to be a really holistic experience and such. Yeah. And yeah, Shivam. So I think your experience part also covered that the culture in Visa is really good. It's really collaborative, and everyone is ready to help. So, like in general, what's uh, your opinion on the work-life balance part of it? Like, you were working with the US team, but for someone who's working with an Indian yeah. team. so even with the us team the work life balance was fine and uh, my manager actually uh, moved me to the indian team in just two months so and here the work life balance is really good and visa is actually known for the work life balance so that is a very good thing in visa so if i am feeling low or i am not feeling good there is no pressure on me as such there is no strict deadlines as such but yeah like it does impact on your performance and reviews but there is no as such pressure unless like you are completing your goals in a specified timeline and the timeline is generally selected by the internal like the engineer only and not the manager side like they are very understanding this thing 
right right sure. that's great to hear and okay moving on so like if someone is planning to join visa so what kind of different teams are there and like what different tech stack someone can expect to work on as a as an engineer at visa okay so um there are a lot of projects going on in visa right now so as you know it's a fintech uh, corporation so a lot of part here is major focused on uh, security and a lot of there it's there uh, on the side of data because as you know visa ha- has to deal with a lot of data so a lot of technologies resolve revolve around the big data also so our uh, me uh, at work at a data platform so here we work on mostly on the a lot of open source technologies we are using we are building up products on these open source technologies and even contributing to open sources oh that that's a great thing like you you rarely get to work on open source tech stack when when you're working in mnt mostly are proprietary tools and software so that's amazing so i and what are the different roles like uh, there is front end back end data scientist what, what are the different opportunities in visa yeah so there is a front end uh, option also there is software engineer and there is data engineer so these are the major roles we currently have to so sure, sure. okay so moving on to the next part so this is like <laughs> uh, this is something that most people want to hear about so uh, like if you have to select uh, from all you must be getting a ton of benefits but like if you have to select one or two best out of this complete group so i know one is that interns get to go on a fully paid trip to san francisco which sadly your batch didn't get but like what's the best benefit according to you okay <laughs> that's a really tough one so that thing about that san francisco thing has been cancelled for our batch and i don't know if it will be there for upcoming batches considering covid restrictions also so right. that is i don't think it will it will be continuing later but yeah i can't comment on that thing but uh, the major benefit i would feel as in like uh, you really get to learn a lot and there are a lot of parties you get to for team lunches and visa do organize corporate events in bangalore only for the interns so like we had a global summit here and it was a nice experience right right got it sir okay so let's move on to the next section of our discussion now moving on to the requirements part so uh, is there any minimum uh, cgpa criteria that uh, um i don't think so but it's mostly the college specific if, if they come to different college with different gpa criteria is being set by the college and not visa as such for our case in the dtu it was around 8 the gpa which they allowed 7.5 or 8 okay right got it and okay so if someone is planning to apply for g uh, visa Uh, like what what should be the highlights in the resume or and what kind of projects do should they focus on or put in their resume okay um first of all like they should at least know one of the java or python like they should have a very good command in one of either of these two languages because a lot of projects here are based on um java and python there are a lot of projects with javascript and other languages golang also but yes java and python is something which is considered important in visa so that is one thing other than that uh, if you have a lot of if you are, if you are good in database like database languages mysql it's a good plus point and uh, your projects should actually specify a lot of things like uh, the project should more on focus on the complete cycle of it like how you selected the project how you designed it and how you how you faced the obstacles during the project so they focus more on these things they tend to ask questions around that so you should have in depth knowledge of your project and one key feature they do ask is why you use this tech uh, this tech stack so you should know what other options are there and why you didn't use them 
and further if you are using some database then they will definitely go inside that and will ask why you use mysql and not mongodb just an example right. so yeah and other thing like dsa you should focus on dsa because even in the interview process the dsa is a key feature for the visa recruitment process okay right so just in continuation to what you just said so uh, like dsa is one of the important topics for interviews uh, but uh, do they ask questions from other core uh, computer science subjects uh, or system design questions or it is completely uh, it completely revolves around data structure and algorithm so my interview revolved around complete data structure and algorithm but i have known my peers who had interviews regarding their system design also okay right is the first question like the a, a most like uh, for interns there is just one interview but for the placement there are full time inter full time there is three interviews and in that part they do ask about system design and even in intern a first part of it is dsa so dsa without dsa it's not going anywhere okay dsa is the bare minimum but there there's a chance they might ask system design yes they must tell uh, system design and they might ask my sql queries also in the interviews okay right right and uh, system design i i'm assuming that for freshers it won't be in so much depth like it would be something that a fresher might be aware of yes uh, definitely and they will try to resolve it around the projects you would have mentioned oh okay that got it got it sure uh, shivam that was really insightful so moving on to the next point of our discussion so if in case a uh, visa does not uh, visit campus for on camp uh, on campus recruitment so what are the different ways uh, people can apply like what are the different off campus hiring procedures and stuff okay so visa has a page uh, like if you go and check it's a talent acquisition team so they have opening from time to time you can directly apply there but it is generally recommended to get a referral from someone at visa so you can easily contact people in on linkedin and ask for referral visa is actively hiring off campus also moving on to the final part of the discussion uh, so shivam would you like to elaborate a little on your recruitment procedure for visa yeah so visa came to dp and for the interns there was a coding round for 90 minutes and there was one interview and for the full timers there was one coding round of 90 minutes and three interviews yeah so uh, basically the process the coding round consisted of four questions uh, four questions of data structure and algorithm you have to uh, anyone who completed at least three got selected for the interview and then there was one interview which was combined technical and hr hr was not much it's just few normal questions okay i mean i know that it must have been a long time since you gave this interview so just in case if you remember what kind of questions were given or what was the level of these questions yeah so for uh, i don't remember the exact questions but yes for the coding round the questions were not difficult i would say but they were tricky so uh, i remember like the uh, concept used were very simple like normal uh, cadence principle or minimum coin exchange principle but there was a layer above it where you have to get understand which concept is being used like i remember there was a question which was simply like you have to get it that the data will always be sorted that was the trick in that question and then the question was very simple so that's how the questions were made like the question you have to get what they are trying to give or like which concept you have to apply that was the key thing right this was for the coding round for the interview process for my interview process there were dsa questions the dsa questions were normal so like one i remember was to move the zeros to the right it's a very famous question so uh, another thing like after that they asked me the questions about java so the the questions were regarding garbage collector abstract classes and static variables they were trying to check about the oops concept and also the basic knowledge of the language yeah 
right got it sir and uh, like i just remembered that uh, you summarized your interview experience in a article in an article as well so uh, probably if someone wants to view the questions in detail i'll just uh, drop a link for that article in the description or sure, i'll share it with you post this process sure sure definitely that would be great so i think that's all from my side shivam um, uh, would you like to add anything um no i think that mostly covered a lot of it since i was just uh, got selected from the interview uh, uh, from the intern and then i just got the ppo um there was not much coding there was not much interview round for me so yeah sure shivam so again thanks a lot for taking out time uh, and sharing your experience and uh, we i think we'll end this video here uh, thanks everyone for watching stay safe and keep learning